Now, one very confusing thing about statistics and uncertainties is the difference between different things called standard. There are basically too many things with standard in the name. So we have standard uncertainties, we have standard errors, and we have a standard deviation. What's the difference between all these things? Why do they have such stupid names? Well, that's what this video is all about. What is the difference between these things? Which do you use where? Now, the easiest thing is standard uncertainty versus standard error, because they're the same thing. Same thing. Now, we prefer to call them standard uncertainties rather than standard errors. Why do we prefer that? Well, for a physicist, uncertainty and error means the same thing. But for most people, uncertainty means, hmm, I don't quite know what's going on here, whereas error means someone made a mistake. So the word error implies blame, someone should get sacked. Whereas uncertainty is a much more reasonable, inevitable thing. We always have uncertainty. And because that's much closer to the scientific meaning, there's always uncertainty. It's not that someone's made a mistake, usually. We prefer to call it standard uncertainty because it confuses people in the general public and politicians less. So use whichever you prefer. A lot of the old books refer to these as errors, but the preferred term is uncertainty just because it confuses people less. Okay, well that's the easy one. The trickier one is the difference between a standard deviation and a standard uncertainty. Now, basically, a standard deviation is one way of measuring the standard uncertainty. It's actually called the type A method for measuring the standard uncertainty. There's also a type B method. So there are two different ways you can work out what the standard uncertainty is, the type A and the type B. And these uh, is official terminology. It's in the uh, official standards, the gun standard. So. Why are there two ways of measuring uncertainties? Now let's say you're trying to measure how fast a car is moving, what speed it's at, its velocity v. And you want to work out what the uncertainty in the measurement is. And let's say you drive it down a track and you measure the time it takes to go some distance and you measure the distance. So you've got t and d. And of course, the velocity is going to be the distance divided by the time. Now, the type B method of calculating the uncertainty will be to say, how accurately can we measure the distance? So you might look at your tape measure or your ruler or your laser metrology system, whatever it is, and work out the uncertainty in that. And you might work out what stopwatch or whatever you're using to measure the time and have uncertainties of both of those. And you'll plug those uncertainties through some equations and work out the uncertainty of the velocity. This is calculating from first principles. So to do this, you need to know exactly how you're measuring whatever it is you're trying to measure, and then you try and work out every component of that measurement and the uncertainty of all those components, and then feed it through the uncertainty propagation equations, and that should tell you the uncertainty in your final measurement. How about type A? Well, type A would say, you make the measurement lots of times, and you calculate the standard deviation. So you have to drive the car over the track maybe 20 times, and you get all the different numbers, and you feed them through the standard deviation equation. So what type A measurement is doing is you have to have lots of measurements, and you see, are they all very close together, or are they spread over a wide range? Whereas type B, you only need one measurement, and you try and work it out just by uh, estimating all the different components of your measurement and how accurate they all are. So if you haven't made the measurements yet and you want to know what uncertainty you're going to have, type B is your only option. If you've made a bunch of measurements, then you can use type A. What's the merits of these? Well, generally speaking, when you can do it, type A is better because it's actually based on reality. You've actually made a bunch of measurements and you're seeing how much scatter there is. If you'd left out something here, it would show up in this, but it might not show in that. Type B is good because you can do it before you've actually made the measurements. It's much cheaper because you don't need to make millions of measurements, but it's very easy to get wrong because it's easy to forget some sort of uncertainty. For example, in this case, the car driving, you thought about the uncertainty in the distance and the uncertainty in the time. 
but in practice the person driving the car might drive at a slightly different speed each time or there might be different amounts of wind resistance or the car's tires might be slowly deflating there could be lots of other things that would feed into this give you a bigger scatter make the points have a wider range but wouldn't feed into that so generally speaking the best way to determine uncertainty is make lots of repeat measurements and then calculate the standard deviation using the normal equation and that tells you what the standard uncertainty is. If you can't do that, then you can try to type B, try and work out all the different things that could make it vary, add them all together and work out the standard uncertainty that way. Ideally, both these two will give the same answer. In practice, this is often bigger.